Okay, today we're going to be discussing dual processing, specifically in Lightroom with their new masking tools. We'll be using these new masking features to edit the same image, but we'll be splitting how we edit the sky from the foreground. And this is a very important tool to learn how to use. There are a lot of things you want to do to the foreground that you don't necessarily want to do to the sky and vice versa. So dual processing is a great way in landscape photography to get the best out of the sky and out of the foreground independently and then see them in one image at the end. Okay, we're going to jump straight into Lightroom and get started with the dual processing of the images. And the reason dual processing is so powerful is that it allows us to edit the sky independently of the foreground. And you'll see this image that I shot at Bloberg with Table Mountain in the background requires some dual processing because the background with Table Mountain and the sky is very hazy and we want to do different things to the sky that we potentially want to do to the foreground which is nice and sharp and in focus. So dual processing, very powerful in landscape photography. It allows us to edit the sky and the foreground independently of each other on the same image. So in order to do that, you'll see your tools on the right hand side at the top of your panels and the masking tool is the tool on the far right. When you click on it, you will see there are a variety of options. These are select subject, select sky, the brush, linear gradient and radial gradient, which we used to in past uh, versions of Lightroom. And the color range and luminance range is also available in previous versions of Lightroom that are a little bit more hidden, but it's great to see a wide selection of masking tools available now in Lightroom. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the select sky. This is what you will use 90% of the time when doing this type of dual processing. The other option is to use the linear gradient, which is what we did in the past. However, it's not great if there's something that breaks the horizon. So if we have a very clean horizon, solid line, gradient filter, very easy to use for that. But if we have some mountains, such as Table Mountain in this image, or if we have some trees or other things breaking the horizon, the sky select tool is very, very good at separating the sky from the foreground. So we are going to hit select sky and you can see it has now made a selection which is showing up in red on the screen and it has included a table mountain as well. And this is because the table mountain was very, very hazy and very soft in the background and has struggled to separate the mountain from the sky. So we could potentially go in with the subtract tool and subtract table mountain from it manually. However, for this instance, we want to do a lot of dehaze and clarity features to remove a lot of that haze that we're seeing. It is perfectly fine to leave a table mountain in the sky selection for this example. So we are going to call that mask sky. And if you look at your little mask thumbnail, you will see it is white and black. What is white is what we will be making changes to. So white reveals, black conceals is a very good little line to try and remember when dealing with masks. And this carries through into Photoshop masks as well. And the black is what we won't be affecting. And that's, you can see in the little thumbnail. Then we're going to create another sky selection and we're going to come across to the right hand panel and select invert. And by selecting invert, it has inverted it and now we have our foreground selection. And you look at the little thumbnail, you'll see the bottom of the thumbnail is all white because that is our active selection. And we will rename this one foreground. Okay. Now we're going to jump back to our sky and while we're going to process our sky, I'm going to zoom in just a bit so you can see the sky only that we'll be editing. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add back some contrast. And I'm going to be quite heavy on the contrast slider. And then I'm going to come down to the texture, clarity and dehaze tool. These are tools you don't use very often. You actually try and avoid using these tools because they can do a lot of damage to your image um, in terms of creating artifacts and messing up some details. 
But in this instance, these are what the tools are designed for and it's perfectly fine for us to use the tools for very hazy images like this one. So firstly, I'm going to add a little bit of dehaze and you can see it's already popping the sky, removing some of that softness and I'm going to add a minuscule amount of clarity, about 5 to 10, select 9 here. And then texture, I'm also going to add uh, up to a maximum of 10 on the texture. And that has already saved our sky tremendously from what it was before. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop some of those whites a bit in our foreground. Be careful not to blow out any highlights. And to check that, I will look on the histogram and we'll protect those highlights. And the last thing I'm going to do is just play a little bit with the white balance. So we have this very muddied area here from the smog and haze that were present when I took this photo. So to try and hide that a little bit, I'm going to add a bit of magenta so it doesn't look so mustard color. And then I'm going to cool it down just a bit to try and get rid of that. A little bit more magenta. And there we go. So we're just trying to hide a bit of that haze effect by tweaking our white balance a bit. And that's all we're going to do now for the sky. I'm going to just show you the difference between the two. There we go. Switching out. One after. And you can see all we have done is we've just changed the sky and already that's looking much, much, much better than it did before. And this is the power of dual processing is with all the things we've done to the sky, we wouldn't necessarily have wanted to have done to the foreground. So we don't want to do global adjustments. We want to be very specific to the sky. Now we're going to jump across to our foreground and our foreground, we're going to do almost completely the opposite. We want to soften it a little bit so it doesn't look too busy. We're going to bring up some of those shadows in these black areas in the rock so we can see a little bit more detail. To do that, we go back to our masking tools and now we select our foreground mask. And in our foreground mask, the first thing I'm going to do is just bring up a little bit of those shadows to reveal that detail in the rocks that was lost um, in the blacks. Then I'm going to reduce the contrast just slightly, about eight. And I'm going to pop those whites a little bit so that they stand out a little bit more to about 15. And then I'm actually going to bring the clarity down about five. And that'll just put a little bit of soften the edges of the water and the rocks a bit so it doesn't look so textured. And we can even bring the texture down to minus four. So very subtle changes. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just go to the white balance just so that it matches the sky a little bit better. And I'm going to cool that down a tiny bit and add a tiny bit of magenta into it. And I think that looks great for our foreground. I don't think we need to do too much else. I might just add a little bit more on the whites just so they pop a little bit more and that's all I'm going to do for the dual processing part. Remember this is only the things that we want to do to the sky and the foreground that are separate. Once we've got to this point we can go in and do some global adjustments and do some vignette correction. We can go um, and maybe add a little radial filter to give us some directionality to the sky and some linear gradients but that will be global adjustments or things that we do to specific parts that aren't the whole foreground or the whole sky. So I'm just going to show you now the before and after and there you can see before and after with the dual processing massive massive difference and very powerful tool to use in your landscape photography. And now to finish off the image a few little other tools I'm going to use I'm going to stick to the masking tools because that's very important and powerful in this video. I've used a linear gradient. I'm going to pull that up from the bottom. 
and I'm going to use this just to direct your eye a little bit. So I'm going to add some contrast to pop out that water and then I'm going to drop the exposure a little bit so our eye moves up quicker over the water. Okay, um, and then I'm also going to pull those whites up a little bit in that foreground. And the last thing I'm going to do with filters is use a radial filter. And I'm going to put the radial filter over this point where the sun was coming from. And this is a great way to also help blend those, your sky and your foreground editing by having a filter that spans both of these. It kind of marries the two together a little bit better. This is where the sun would have been located on this side and I'm just going to add a little bit of warmth and brightness to this just to show that light source point. So I'm going to make that a little bit warmer. I'm going to reduce some of the contrast there. I'm going to reduce some of the shadows, pick up some of the highlights a bit, a little bit of the whites. And then I'm actually going to expand it so it's a little bit bigger coming across. Just like that, coming across. So I've just added that radial filter um, just to show that light source of where the sun is coming from as well into our photo. and. That's it. That's all I'm really going to do for this photo. There are a lot of little things you can also do. So as you can see, the final image is up on the screen here. Um, there are a few little things you can still go in and tweak and clean up and do. But for the point of this video, I really wanted to show that dual processing where we edit the sky separately from the foreground. And I think you can see the difference that makes in terms of reducing that um, haze that we had in the sky and popping the contrast and then softening our foreground and bringing out those shadows. So I hope you enjoyed that and go and try out some dual processing and let me know how it goes.